Well, greetings and welcome to another PTC camera review. Um, if you're new to this channel, I've actually reviewed several cameras. Um, so many, in fact, that I kind of thought I was done doing it, having surveyed most of the market. Uh, but then AV Cans re reached out. Um, I reviewed one of their cameras before, uh, and they said they were bringing out something new that they wanted to show me um, and take a look at, which is their new economy line. So this is what I got. This is the AV Cans E20. NDI. Um, and those of you that know will know that that NDI part is actually pretty neat. Um, I'm a big fan of NDI as a technology. It's a technology that lets you get um, your audio and your video um, off of your camera uh, in a broadcastable format. So a really high quality thing that you could actually use to broadcast just over um, a standard Ethernet, uh, over your normal network. Uh, so I'm always a proponent if you're going to buy a camera, even if you're not going to use NDI in the beginning, to go ahead and get an NDI camera. They're usually a little bit more money, um, but get the NDI version so you have it in the future. So when they said they were coming out with an economy camera uh, that also featured NDI, I did want to take a look. So I have actually looked at several um, cheap PTZs, um, and so far, I think the least expensive one I've reviewed is about $650. And that was a pretty basic model um, that didn't come uh, with NDI. This thing is $550 at the time I'm recording this on Amazon, and it does come with NDI, and I think there's even a non-NDI version that's a little cheaper. Now, in order to get at that price, they had to make a few concessions, but, but not in any areas that I think people will actually use um, for those of us who use these cameras for things like live streaming, classrooms, or, you know, worship, or, you know, government things or whatever it is we're using for, for live streaming these days. Um, everything you need is in here, um, and what they skipped on is probably some stuff you weren't going to use anyway. So basic breakdown with this is, this is a PTZ camera, as you would expect to find. Um, it's got all of the ports on the back you would expect to find. You've got HDMI out, you've got SDI out, of course you have an Ethernet connection, um, you've got an audio in, um, and, uh, and then the, the legacy um, serial uh, ports as well if you're still using those. Now, uh, it is 3G SDI, which is fine because this is a 1080p camera. So this is HD quality, um, 1080p um, up to uh, 60 uh, hertz, 60 frames per second. Uh, it actually sh sh ships, short ship, ships <laughs> uh, defaulted to 25, uh, which is actually kind of more of this, the, the standard for like PAL, which is kind of Europe and um, Asia and those sorts of places. Um, but it's easily selectable and switchable to like 1080, 60 or 1080, 30, which is what most of your streaming equipment will find. So it's not 4K, but at this price, you don't expect it to be. Um, but it's, it's fine because most everything we use for live streaming these days, your ATM mini products and, you know, YOLO boxes and all that sort of stuff are pretty are, are all going to be HD quality anyway. So you shouldn't have any problem getting HD out of this. Um, it's the Sony chip. Uh, there are many, 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 many manufacturers of the cameras. There are only two companies that really make the image sensors, the chips inside of them that actually absorb the light and turn it into uh, something uh, that you can see. Um, well, I guess you can always see light something that the computer can see um, and turn it into a video feed. That's the job of the image sensor. There's a Panasonic chip and there's a Sony chip. Everybody uses one of those. Um, this is the Sony chip, the one over 2.8. Um, it's a great chip. It's got good color. Um, it's fine. Uh, it works really well uh, and, and everything else. So shouldn't, shouldn't have any problem there. Um, and then you get all your standard like control options uh, as well. Um, so it's got OnViv, it's got Visca, so you can control up here. Um, to your joystick or whatever, uh, and then it has a remote. Now, here's the thing. This is an economy um, camera option, but it has, frankly, one of the best remotes I have seen to the point that you may actually even consider using it. Usually, i not a big fan of using the remotes, uh, but this is actually one of the better ones I've seen. And the thing that I like about this the most is unlike any other camera that I've seen so far, it's got this switch right here, which is your iris control or your exposure control right here on this. Now, this can be helpful if you're in like a place where you have like a really bright, you know, 
part of the room and then another part that's really dark. Um, the camera has to decide what exposure to use. And sometimes, um, you know, if it decides to you, you know, adjust for the darker part of the scene, um, the brighter part can get really washed out. We've actually run into that problem um, here where we are. Uh, and so having a manual control for the iris where you can manually set your exposure um, is super handy. Now, another thing that differentiates this camera um, from most of the other ones I reviewed is how you set it up. It doesn't have uh, a, the way the way that most of these get set up is you know you have to you know put it on your network and then you log in you know to a web page through your web page um, into the camera. This actually comes with its own control software uh, to set it up instead of that system, which actually I found a lot easier to do um, and it's probably going to be a lot simpler for a lot of people. So let's switch over um, to my office where my computer is uh, and we'll see how the setup process works. All right, so I have actually moved over to my office so that I can show you the software you use to set up this particular camera. Um, most cameras actually have like a web-based backend that you have to log in with a web browser. This one doesn't do that. And in fact, they've written their own client software that you have to install on a computer uh, in order to manage it. Now, this. As I'm recording this, this offers PC only, so I had to actually go borrow um, a, a PC from somebody because I'm pretty much a Mac guy, uh, and, so that I can install it. But uh, it does install it pretty easily. Um, you get the kind of standard security warning here, um, and instructions on where to download the software is included, obviously, with the camera. All right, so uh, here we go, and and you can see we've got some uh, uh, pretty basic setup here. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go down here and going to start search. Um, and because my computer and my camera are on the same network, it has no problems finding it. So I'm going to select it down here, find it. I'm going to hit add to client. Um, the instructions say that you don't actually need to put in any sort of username or password. Um, so we'll see if that's true. Uh, and there we go. All right. So now I've got my camera here added to my client. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to hit remote configure, uh, which is right up here um, at the top. There we are. All right, so it is connected to my camera. Um, so this is the remote configuration page um, for it. You can see you've got um, a lot of very familiar features if you're used to PTC cameras, um, but you've got two different um, IP streams. Um, so this is your all the information on your mainstream. You can choose your resolution, um, your bit rate, um, your frame rate, um, you know, and all those kind of standard things that you would you would want to select um, for this. Uh, and there's some some basic audio uh, controls as well. One limitation, because this is an economy camera, is it does have an audio in, but the audio will only get paired up with the video on the IP stream. Um, you won't get the audio out on either the HDMI or the SDI out, which is probably not a big deal. Most people only use these cameras for the video part, uh, but that is a limitation um, that comes that they told me flat out was a, was a cost consideration. Um, so you do have some audio controls here for the IP side, but, you know, uh, there you go. All right, uh, the network is connecting with DHCP, which is great. It defaults to connecting with DHCP, which is great. So you just plug it in and it's going to get an IP address from your network just like anything else will, um, which is a wonderful, wonderful feature. Um, I wish more things did that. Um, but you do have the ability to set your own um, IP address for it if you need to. Um, this doesn't seem to have any problem finding it, though. Uh, you do have two RMT, RTMP um, options as well. So this is for streaming directly from the camera. I actually have a video on that. Um, how to stream directly from a, like a PTZ optic style camera. Um, the difference here would be you would uh, that URL and all that information you need for where you're where to send where you want the camera to send its RTMP would be uh, right here. Uh, that should be coming off the IP stream, so it should include the audio as well, which is good. Um, protocol. This is for Visca. Um, this can this camera offers um, NDI control, which we mentioned before, but also the traditional OnViv and Visca controls as well. Um, so you can see whether you want to use, uh, which version of that you want to use. All of those are different ways of doing the same thing, which is controlling your camera uh, off of a network. So if it's on the same network as OBS or other software that you use, or say like your joystick or whatever, um, that's that's how you can do it. OnViv just sort of works. NDI just sort of works. Visca, it's an older protocol, does need a little bit of setup. You got to tell it a little bit more about what you want it to do. Um, so here you can um, enable um, 
Visca. It's funny. This is the, it says protocol, but it is for Visca. Um, and then whether you want to use the TCP or the UDP version. Uh, in my experience, especially if you want to use the OBS controls, the TCP version seems to work pretty well. Um, IP, um, they said specifically instructed you can just leave it blank. And then 5678 is the kind of standard port for that. So you've got that as well. Uh, this is where you would come to do an upgrade if they did like a firmware upgrade or whatever. You can see we're on a very early version of firmware, you know, version 1.0.01. Um, sometimes in the future, they, they put out additional firmwares. Maybe it helps fix some problems. Who knows? Uh, but if you need to do an upgrade, that's where you do it. Um, then you get basic setups, you know, if you want to add a password to it, what the name of the camera is, um, you know, rebooting it, you know, all those kinds of things you you may want to do. Um, this is a nice feature here. Um, if you buy, say, several of these cameras and you have specific ways you want to set them up, you can go through, you can set one all the way up, you can come in here, um, and then you can export um, the various settings um, from it, uh, and then, um, and then import those onto another camera so you can kind of set it up once and then, you know, do, do it somewhere else. Uh, nice, nice feature if you're going to do multiple cameras. Um, and then finally, your NDI settings. Um, again, including NDI at this price point is just such an amazing thing. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're, if you're considering, you know, a camera, you know, I would always suggest go ahead and get the NDI version. Uh, it's always a little bit more money. Um, I think this, you know, is $50 extra. And that's basically the licensing fee that they have to pay to the NDI people is what you're paying for for that extra $50. Uh, but it's just so great to have. And so you can name it here and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So this is how you configure the, the back end of, or configure all the settings on your camera. And you can see it's pretty straightforward and it works. All right. Well, since we're here, let's go ahead and open up OBS Studio. Um, and I've done a little bit of playing with this um the camera already. Um, so you can see right here we have uh, a live feed um, from NDI. So this is set up as an NDI source um, in um, in OBS. So we've got that. So you can see there's a live stream right there. Um, and then I like to use, there's a couple different plugins for OBS that you can use for PTZ control. PTZ Optics has one um, that works really well with their cameras, works with some other cameras. Um, I've you know, uh, I'm, I, but that is only available for PC. Um, and I'm, I'm again, a Mac guy. So there's another just kind of generic PTZ control, um, software that works pretty well. Um, so you can see that here, I'm going to select my camera. I've got that already all set up. Um, and I can, you know, do a little moving and a little tweaking with it. Um, you know, as far as that goes, um, the nice thing that you can do, um, with the control software is you can actually go ahead and program all those different presets in there. You can see the different presets, um, listed, uh, and you can actually add those presets to your scene in OBS. And when you switch to that scene in OBS, um, it can execute a preset and move the camera to wherever it is you want the camera moved to um, at the beginning of that scene, uh, which is which is kind of clever. Um, one thing I forgot, forgot to note in that backend software, you might've saw it go by real quick, is you can set um, in that backend what preset you want the camera to start off in. So when you turn it on for the first time, usually it goes to the home position which is basically, you know, fully zoomed out and looking straight forward. Um, but you could say, say, like preset one um, as the home you actually want it to use when you turn it on. Um, and in that back end software, you can select um, do that, you know, start there, uh, which is a nice feature to have if you're using it. Um, we have one that that we use uh, just for uh, to feed a screen in another part of the building. Um, and so when we turn it on, we then have to adjust where, where we want it to actually look. Um, and if we could do that with a preset and just automatically into that preset, that would be super sweet. All right, well, let's head back over to the studio and check out a few more things uh, about this rather nice, inexpensive camera. So real quick here, I'm going to break in and say I misspoke. Uh, the ability to set a default preset is actually on the on-screen menu uh, for your camera. You go into your menu, you come down to pan, tilt, zoom, and then right here, it says power up action, home, preset one, preset two, uh, you know, whichever one you want it to be. Uh, still a nifty feature and actually maybe even a little bit more helpful um, on the on-screen menu than on the back end setup. 
All right, and we're back here. Um, I do want to show you, um, as we kind of wrap up here, uh, what has kind of become my standard color test um, with this guy. You can see the results of that. Um, I think it performs well, um, as good, if not a little better uh, than most, and especially at this price point, um, you, you get some pretty decent um, quality out of that. It is, uh, you can run it over power over ethernet, PoE. Um, usually it's PoE plus um, is what you need, uh, which means it is single cable installable. So if you're using the NDI, solution um, for your video you can um, you can basically run one cable to it that'll control to have your data and your power and your control and everything all in one uh, really great if you're going to kind of tuck it away um, somewhere um, as is a growing trend I think with some of these cameras it doesn't actually have a physical power button um, on it which I guess is fine um, you gives you a couple of options you can actually switch the power that's going to it um, so plug its power adapter into a power strip and switch the power there um, there is, you know, a power button um, on the remote that I think puts it a little bit more in like on a sleep mode than a true power off mode. Um, but that's another option as well. But you'll need to keep the remote handy. Uh, we actually just switch the power to the PoE. Uh, we have a PoE switch um, that actually switches the data, but also provides power to all of our cameras. Um, and we just disconnect the power um, from the PoE right there. And that just shuts everything down. Um, and that works as well. Um, so on on the whole, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm actually really surprised um, at, at how well it performed. Um, I'm really glad to see the pricing coming down on these because um, people, I think, are finding more and more uses for them. Um, and I'm really, really glad to see an NDI camera uh, at this price point. Again, as we talked about, a couple of compromises along the way with the audio uh, and that sort of thing. But on the whole, um, I think that's worthwhile. I did note when I was showing it to you that right now the control software is PC only, so do um, consider that if you're thinking about picking one of these up. Uh, there are links um, below uh, in the description to other cameras I reviewed, it links to Amazon um, for this camera specifically. Um, if you're thinking about buying one, please click those links. Um, that really is the lifeblood of this channel and, and really what, what keeps it going. So uh, this is the AVCast E20 NDI, um, and I'm going to say right now this is pretty probably for the bargain-minded consumer looking for an inexpensive camera, especially if you're going to buy maybe multiple of them, this may be the way to go right now. Uh, I'm, I must confess, I think, I think this is the way that I would go if I were in the market uh, and especially getting started. So hope you found this useful. Um, please comment with any questions or uh, thoughts you may have, other things you think I need to look at um, or things that you find could be helpful. That really helps me out. The comments really help me out. Um, and until I see you again, have a great day. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions of the feedback you give. So keep that coming and I will keep making them. Thank you.